Imagine this, you're looking at a painting, but it's not like any painting you've seen before. The objects are broken up, fragmented. The perspective is all wrong, yet somehow it works. This is the magic of Cubism. Cubism wasn't just a new art style, it was a revolution. Before Cubism, art tried to copy reality. Cubism shattered that idea. It said, we can show you multiple perspectives at once. We can break down objects and reassemble them on canvas. It was shocking, confusing, and utterly brilliant. Cubism forced people to see the world in a completely new way. Suddenly, art wasn't just about pretty pictures. It was about ideas, about challenging perceptions, about seeing the world through an artist's unique lens. At the heart of this revolution were two names, Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. These two artists, close friends and collaborators, were the pioneers of Cubism. Picasso, the more flamboyant of the two, was already a rising star. Braque, quieter but equally talented, found in Picasso a kindred spirit. Together they would change the face of art forever. Their early experiments involved breaking down objects into geometric shapes, Think cubes, cones, cylinders. These shapes became the building blocks of their art. It was like they were deconstructing the world around them, then piecing it back together in a new and exciting way. This new approach wasn't immediately welcomed. Critics were baffled. Some even called it the art of madmen. But Picasso and Brack pressed on, their belief in their vision unwavering. The first phase of cubism is known as analytical cubism. This period, roughly from 1908 to 1912, was all about analysis. Picasso and Braque dissected objects, breaking them down into their most basic forms. Imagine a still life, a bottle, a fruit, a newspaper. In analytical cubism, these everyday objects were transformed. The artist analysed their forms, their volumes, their relationship to space. Colour was almost entirely absent. The focus was on form, structure and the interplay of planes. Muted tones of brown, grey and black dominated their canvases. It was like looking at an X-ray of an object, seeing through its surface to its very essence. Analytical cubism was a cerebral art. It challenged viewers to think, to engage with the artwork on an intellectual level. It wasn't about beauty in a traditional sense. It was about exploring new ways of seeing and understanding the world. Section 4. Synthetic Cubism, Collage and the Rise of New Materials. But Cubism wasn't static. It continued to evolve. Around 1912, Picasso and Braque ushered in a new phase, Synthetic Cubism. If Analytical Cubism was about deconstruction, Synthetic Cubism was about synthesis, about building something new. One of the key innovations of Synthetic Cubism was the introduction of Collage. Picasso and Braque began incorporating real-world materials into their paintings. Newspaper clippings, wallpaper, fabric scraps. Imagine a guitar, but instead of being painted, it's made up of pieces of newspaper and sheet music. This was a radical departure. By incorporating everyday materials, Picasso and Braque challenged the very definition of art. Synthetic cubism was also marked by a return to colour. Bright hues and bold patterns made their way back onto the canvas. The art became more playful, more vibrant, more accessible to the viewer. Masterpieces of Cubism, from Les Demoiselles to Guernica. Cubism wasn't just an abstract movement, it produced some of the most iconic artworks of the 20th century. Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, painted in 1907, is a proto-Cubist masterpiece. This large-scale painting of five nude women was shocking for its time. Another iconic work is Picasso's Guernica, a powerful anti-war statement painted in 1937. This monumental black-and-white canvas depicts the horrors of war. These are just two examples of the many masterpieces that Cubism produced. Section 6 Cubism's Lasting Legacy, a revolution that continues to inspire. Cubism wasn't just a passing fad. It changed the course of art history. Its influence spans countless art movements. Cubism's legacy extends beyond art. It taught us to see the world from different perspectives. Today, Cubism continues to inspire. Its spirit of innovation and audacity still resonate. Cubism is about creating new realities and ways of seeing. 
This is the true legacy of this revolutionary art movement.